Thank you, singers and musicians. Y'all can be dismissed. Amen. First John chapter five, verse fourteen. First John chapter five, verse fourteen. When you have it, say, oh me. I mean, amen. And this is the confidence. Everybody say confidence. That we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. Everybody say this with me. God doesn't need convincing. God does not need convincing he loves you he died for you amen and he will do for you what he needs to do for you without you having to convince him but he wants us to have confidence in him and he wants us to approach him according to his will that's what I want to talk to you tonight God does not need convincing let's pray God I want to thank you for your word God we want to come and we want to honor and magnify and glorify you here tonight god i thank you for this message god i pray that you would help me deliver it not only to them god but to myself this is also for me god i'm a recipient of all of these words that you send god and we are very grateful for them and we desire of them i pray that it would settle in our spirits tonight god and that we would learn of you in jesus name the church said in jesus name you can be seated thank you so much for standing Amen. Confidence. God wants you to have faith and confidence in his ability. Amen. God is a pretty awesome God. And his track record, amen, shows him to be faithful. It shows him to be that there is nothing too hard for him. And God wants you to have confidence in his ability. Now, when Jesus cursed the fig tree, the disciples saw this and they marveled. Jesus said, Verily I say unto you, if you have faith and doubt not, you shall not only do this which is done to the fig tree, but also if you shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, it shall be done. Verse 22, and all things, everybody say all things, whatsoever you ask in prayer, Believing, that's where the confidence comes in at. Jesus is saying, you aren't allowed to ask me something that you don't believe that I can do. Whatever you ask in prayer. How many times have we prayed prayers that we had trouble believing that God was really going to do it? Because I have struggled with that at times. Sometimes I'm like the man. I'm like doubting Thomas. God help my unbelief. Amen. But Jesus said, if you're going to approach me, you're going to have to have confidence in me. And you're going to have to believe that I am able to do what you are asking me to do. Is there anybody here tonight that you need God to move and work on your behalf? Maybe you have a situation at the job. Maybe you have a situation in your marriage. Maybe you have a situation in your family or your finances or whatever it might be, can I tell you that God does not need convincing. You have to have confidence in Him and that confidence will create a boldness in you. And we understand that uh, when Peter and John went before the council, the Bible says that there was a boldness about them and they perceived that they had been with Jesus. Can I say this tonight? The more time you spend with God, whether that be in church, whether that be in prayer, whether that be in sacrifice as far as giving or, or, or making your relationship with God stronger, whatever way that is for you, the more time you spend with God, the more confident you will be in God. When they saw Peter and John, they saw their boldness. Why did they have a boldness? Because they had just spent three years with Jesus Christ. They saw the miracles. They saw the signs. They saw the wonders. Hear me tonight, church. This is the message that God gave me last night. I thought he was going to have me preach it this morning. But he had another message this morning. Do not lose confidence in your God. God is going to show up every single time. 
God has never left us. He's never forsaken us. We don't need to have no doubt. We don't, have, we don't need to have any wavering in us. Can I tell you that he's still sitting on the throne tonight? Amen. You don't have to look in God's direction and say, ah, is it going to happen? Is it going to work? Oh, it's going to work out. But it's going to work out according to his will. Amen. God has not brought you this far to leave you now. And you got to be confident in those words. How many of you got a word when Brother Phillips was here? Come on, don't lose confidence in those words. I know the situation may not look like it's happened or coming to pass, but I want to tell you, the Word of God is true, and you can have confidence. I said you can build your life on it. I have faith, I have confidence that what He is able to promise, He is able to bring to pass. Amen. I'll be honest with you, amen. There's some things that God does that blows my mind. It blows my mind. Why does he do those things that blow your mind? He's trying to show you how great he is. Once he shows you how great he is, don't forget it. Because he don't age. Father time has never caught up with Jesus Christ. You know, we're going to age. I'm going to age. My ability will change. But God's ability will never change. I don't know what you need tonight. I don't know what you're asking him for tonight. But can I tell you, when you go to him with a request, if you'll believe it, the Bible says he's able to give it. Amen. And I'll be honest with you, Sister Rachel, you're one of the ones that have blown my mind because those few meetings that we have, I met you before you started coming to church here, I would have never thought in a million years that you would be sitting on a Pentecostal pew full of the Holy Ghost and baptized in Jesus' name. I would have never thought. But look what the Lord has done. Can I tell you when you see that. You know what God is wanting to do in you. He's wanting to build your confidence. If he can do that. He can do it for somebody else. I said if he can do it with them. He can do it with somebody else. Woo! I feel the Holy Ghost tonight. God wants his church walking around bold. They saw the boldness. Why? Because they said, hang on a second, these men have been with Jesus. When you leave the house of God, you should walk into your city bold, knowing that God goes before you, knowing that God is going to deliver this city into your hand. There was a boldness about David when he said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that is coming against the armies of the living God? Who does this guy think he is? He said, this is no different than the lion and the bear. He put Goliath on the level of an animal. Can I tell you, the enemy is on the level of an animal. Now, there are some dogs I'm scared of, but Fifi's not one of them, all right? I was running, my, I was running our, our, our subdivision one night uh, back in Nacogdoches, and this lady had a pit bull that got loose. And started chasing me. Right? I jump on top of the mailbox. It had one of them little brick mailboxes. I jump on top. And the whole time she's screaming. He don't bite. He don't bite. I'm like well has he ever beat you? You're his owner. He loves you. He don't know me. I'm not going to stick around and try to figure out. Amen. You got to have enough confidence in God that he ain't going to let the devil bite you. He may be barking, he may be running, but there's a God right behind him saying, don't worry, he ain't going to bite. <laughs> oh, I feel it right now. Don't worry, it's not going to cave in. And when you get those words, you need to have confidence that my God is going to protect me. My God is going to come through for me. I've come to tell somebody tonight, God is going to come through for you. Let us come, therefore, boldly unto the throne of grace that we may be obtained mercy and find grace to help in a time of need. You don't have to be ashamed. You don't have to be, amen, condemned. You can come with your failures and with your mistakes and you can boldly come and you can obtain mercy and to get help in a time of need. 
Can I tell you, boldness is an outward expression of an inward confidence. I said boldness is an outward expression of an inward confidence with God. Someone who is not confident with God, you're going to be able to tell it. Someone that is confident with God, you're going to be able to tell it. Amen. Psalms 118.8 said it is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. I'm thankful for what man does. And I do put some confidence in man. But let me tell you something. I trust in Jesus Christ more than I trust in man. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. I'm talking about confidence tonight. The Bible says, cast not away therefore your confidence, which hath great recompense of reward. Don't lose faith in God. I know we preach and we talk about it. Amen. But I'm telling you, if, you're, if God has promised you your children, you put confidence in that. I said, if God has promised you your marriage, you put confidence in that. Hallelujah. Amen. Brother, he, he told you several times you were going to get a raise. You put confidence in that. I don't care what happens. Amen. No pressure, Brother Vincent. <laughs> I was going to play this video Sister Jen did a good job of putting it But I'm just going to tell you about it This morning I was going to play it to you But there was a Sunday school teacher in this church And she went to her pastor And she said for years and years and years I've been going one way And my husband's been going the other way For years and years I've had to live for God by myself And she said I'm coming to tell you that I quit Now I know this morning I preached there's no time to quit But let me just tell you I'm talking about having confidence she said, I've come to tell you I quit. He said, if you love me and you say you respect me like you say you do, he said, teach that Sunday school lesson one more time. For years, she said, Pastor, I'm so distraught. I, I try to bring my kids to church and he takes them out and, and all this stuff. I'm tired of fighting. I'm talking about having confidence in God. I'm ready to quit. I'm ready to throw in the towel. He said, hang on a second. Teach that Sunday school lesson one more Sunday. She said, for you, I'm going to teach it one more time. That coming Sunday morning, she gets up, and a husband that had never supported her in living for God, a husband that never followed her to church, walked into the room. He said, hey, do I have a suit? She said, what are you talking about? He said, where are my black shoes? She said, where are you talking about? He said, you know what I was just thinking last night? For years, I've been going this way while you've been going that way. And he said, I think this morning I want to go to church with you. When you get down to the end of your rope and there is nothing else to hold on to, you hold on to the confidence that God is going to come through for you. Don't cast away your confidence. Amen. Hallelujah. And this is the confidence that we have in Him. If we ask anything according to His will, He heareth us. Now let me kind of give it to you, the he heareth us part, kind of like how God gave it to me. Some of you that don't have children, you're not going to understand this. But some of you that have children, you will understand this. Has your child, has your child ever been asking you a thousand questions at once? And you're going to do it? But you say, I hear you. Doesn't mean that you're not going to do it. But it said he Heareth us. Amen. When our kid comes, it's like, can I get this? Can I get this? Can I get it? They're in a way trying to convince us. Can I tell you, he heard the first time you asked him, and he ain't forgot about it because the Bible says he's not unrighteous to forget. So you don't have to ask and ask and ask and ask because the very first time that you asked, he heard you. Now, here's the caveat God does not need convincing. But we are either asking according to his will or we are trying to convince him according to our will. Hebrews 10.36 says, for you have need of patience. Everybody say patience. That's something that we don't really like. I'm one too. It's hard sometimes for us to be patient. But the Bible says you have need of patience that after you have done the will of God, our confidence is in him that if we ask anything according to his will, that's what it hinges on. After you have done the will of God, you might receive 
The promise, the fulfillment of promises or things in your life that you ask God for is predicated on His will. This is what His will says it is. It says, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you might know, that you might prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. His will is all three. His will is good, His will is acceptable, and His will is perfect. Now, I used this example this morning. I'm going to reiterate it here tonight. But a perfect example of this is Jesus in the garden of Gethsemane. Luke chapter 22, verse 42. He's in a very trying place. He says, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. That is his flesh. That is what he wants. We have to separate out in our own lives. Because the, the purpose of prayer, I believe the purpose of prayer is for us to get past what we want to the place of what God wants. I'm going to say that one more time. The purpose of prayer is to bring us past what we want and into the place that God wants. Remove this cup from me. And if we're not careful, sometimes we stop there. We never get to what God wants. Remove this from me. I don't like it. That's his flesh crying out. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. That has to be the cry of every single child of God. God, I know what I want. I know my desires. The Bible says, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. But hear me tonight. Your will and desire cannot be the driving force in your spiritual life. You cannot be so strong-willed that the will of God cannot be fulfilled in your life. There's nothing wrong with dreams and ambitions. God wants you to have those. But it always comes back to, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. And something that we really have to focus on and be able to separate and understand why we separate the two. Here it is. The willingness of God and the will of God are two separate things. The willingness of God and the will of God are two separate things. You have often heard it preached. We talk about His will and then we talk about His timing. There are things that God has already decided that He is going to give you. It's just not his timing. There are things that you have asked God for. That he has already decided that he's going to give you and bless you and do for you. But the timing is not yet right. I'll prove it tonight. I'll ask you sister Audrey because brother Lance is having to work. Amen. But I don't believe that y'all decided to buy Cole's first truck. Right before the day of. No. When do you think Brother Lance and Sister Audrey became willing to buy Cole a truck? When he was born. I believe that. When he gets of age, you're going to buy him a truck. I guarantee you. Neither one of said, nope, not going to give my kid a vehicle. Was that true or did you say, yeah, we will. We're going to provide him. It, was, it wasn't even a question. Right? When he gets 16, we're going to give him a truck. Now, at the age of six, trying to t- how God put it in my mind, because we pray according to his will, right? They were willing at day one, but it's not according to their will yet. There's a difference between a willing God and his will. At six years old, Cole comes in and says, Hey, Mama, Dad, do you mind if I have a new truck? Are they willing? Yes. But is it timing? No. Understand that the will of God will always bring the timing of God at the perfect time. Amen. There are things that God is willing to do for every single one of us. We go to him and we petition him. And he says, okay, I hear you. I understand. But the timing has not yet come. There had to be a 16-year waiting period for Cole to reach the maturity to receive what his mom and dad already was willing to give him on day one. Does that make sense? What are, some, what are some of the reasons why I don't get what I need from God? The Bible says in James chapter 4 verse 3, You ask and don't receive because you ask with wrong motives. 
so that you may spend it on your pleasures. That was the Christian Standard Bible version. Some of our prayers God does not answer because it only pleases us and not Him. Some of our prayers God only answers because it only pleases us and not Him. Thank God He stopped everything in my life that pleased me but didn't please Him. Aren't you thankful for that? There are things, so many things that I went to God for that pleased me, but that did not please God. And God said, I'm not going to do it because I got something better for you. And I said, no, God, I don't want that. I want this. But then when I really got what God wanted to give me, I realized this is the happiest I've ever been. Can I tell you that God takes into account your happiness? He takes into account His joy when He wants to give you something that you may not want at the time. But once you finally get it, you realize, thank God you didn't give me what I wanted. A parent is more likely to meet their child's request when their child has been minding and listening. Are you listening, kids? And being a good kid. All across the world every year, parents tell their children, if you act good, Santa will bring you a lot of awesome gifts. But we understand that. How many parents, when your kid has been acting perfect, they cleaned their room, they took out the trash, they said, yes, sir, no, ma'am. They didn't smack their brother or their sister. They were just doing great. And you look at them and you're like, I want to give you whatever you want. Have y'all ever felt that? Would God be any different? No. I don't believe he would. Sorry. Don't mean to disagree with anybody. It's not always based on what we do or how we act. But sometimes it is. 1 John 3, 22. Put it on the screen. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him. Why? Somebody scream it out. If I ask, I get it. Why? Because I keep his commandments and I do those things that are pleasing in his sight. No different than what your children do. Now, I don't believe it's everything off of works. But I'm saying, if I didn't come to Victoria, that was the will of God. There are certain things I can ask him for because I did what he wanted that I could not have asked him for if I refused to come. I believe that. I believe that. Amen. That's what his word says. Because, because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. So if you need a reason to do his commandments and be pleasing unto God, it's better when you have to go ask him for something. Amen. Now, the Bible says, The Lord is nigh unto all them that call upon him, to all that call upon on him in truth. He will fulfill the desire of them that fear him. He will also hear their cry, and will save them. Aren't you thankful? Some of y'all just got excited right there. You see that? I used to be on the side. When I saw my dad go, boop, I'm like, yes, it's time to go eat. Come on, some of you preachers, kids know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about, Brother Joe. Psalm said this, if I regard iniquity in my heart, God will not hear me. Don't ever take for granted a God that will hear you. I'm so thankful that one day Jesus Christ heard my beckoning call. I said, God, if it's your will, I will live for you for the rest of my life. And I'm telling you. God begin to do things and God begin to meet things. That's why some of you are here. Sister Zoe, that's why you're here. Sister Maudie, that's why you're here. Amen. There's so many, that's why you're here. Because you said, God, I want to do your will. I want to do your plan. I want to be pleasing on you. And God has blessed you. And he has blessed you. And he has blessed you. And he has blessed you. I don't know about you, but I want to be pleasing in his sight. Let's stand all over the house. God, I want to be pleasing to you. Can we just lift our hands right now and worship God? God, I want to be pleasing to you, God. Amen. When I come to you and I ask you of things, I want, to, I want it to be according to your will, God, not according to my will. Amen. I want to call upon you in truth. I want you to be nigh unto me, God. Help us as a church to always be pleasing unto you. 
Help us as a church, God, to always be sensitive to you, to your commandments, to your statutes, God. We want to do what you want us to do, God. We want to be found pleasing in your sight. Thank you for it today, Jesus. And if we seek to please him, if we seek and endeavor to please him, God will work in ways for us. I want to be pleasing to God. I've always had an overwhelming fear. I've always had an overwhelming fear not to obey the voice of God. And I said, God, help me. Help me to remove myself. Help me to remove my wants and my desires. When you come to God, let me tell you how to be successful. First step. Die out to your own will and your own desires as quick as you can. Die out. Put them off the table. Put them off. Say, God, from this point on, whatever you want from me, I'm going to follow you and I'm going to receive. And I promise you, God will put your life together in the most beautiful way. Because I decided to follow God at 20 years old. He gave me a beautiful wife. He gave me a great church. He gave me two beautiful girls. Look what God has blessed some of you with. Look around, look at your children, look at your spouses. This is because you chose to do His will. Amen. And I'm thankful that I can come into an agreement with a God like that. So if you don't have what you've been asking Him for, don't let it discourage you. Don't let it discourage you. Go back. Check your confidence. Say, hang on a second. If God promised it, I'm going to believe it and I'm going to stand on it. And anything that I ask according to His will, the Bible says that He hears me. And when I ask, if I believe, he shall give it to me. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's give him a good hand clap of praise right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen, amen. Thank you for coming. Amen. It's already close to the end of the month. Next Sunday, we'll just have one Sunday morning, no Sunday night. Amen. But let's remember ladies' Bible study. Amen. Let's remember men's prayer Saturday at 8 o'clock. Men, I encourage all of you that can and will, please come. It's been several months since we have uh, done men, men's prayer because of the end of the year. But, amen, we can all unify together that we can never have too much prayer. That's what I believe. Amen. So, let's come and let's unify together. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Yes. Yes, we need to pray. COVID, I'll be honest with you, COVID is going around. Quite a bit of people have COVID right now. Um, so we just want to be in prayer for everyone. So can we pray for the Griffins right now? God, I'm asking you to touch brother and sister Griffin. I'm asking you right now, God, according to your will, that you would not let it to uh, progress, God, that you would touch them, strengthen their body, God. Amen. I thank you right now for both of those sweet, precious people, God. I pray right now that you would touch them, that you would help them, that you would minister to them, Jesus. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, amen. Hallelujah. Y'all confident tonight? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You're dismissed in the fear and the love of the Lord. We'll see you back Wednesday night. God bless you.